Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Afterburner. I'm Bill Woodle. Short tale today, short and to the point, because I can't bear to tell the story at any length, not these days. Last Friday, I was sitting in seat 34A on a Southwest Airlines jet on the ramp at LAX. All of a sudden, a wave of people, baggage handlers, gate agents, pilots, and support crew, a wave of them, a sea of them, appeared out of nowhere, looking into the sky behind my jet, and they were holding up cameras. They were beaming, and I knew what it was. I just didn't know if I could bear to watch it, but I did. So I craned around to look through that tiny little jet window, and I saw about 300 yards away a 747 fly past about 100 feet above the runway, and on its back was a spaceship. And behind it, twin F-18s in white and blue flew escort. Flew the length of the runway at about the height of any medium building, and then it banked and climbed out over the ocean, heading for Santa Monica, the valley, and the foothills. Endeavour, the last and youngest of the space shuttles, flew home to LA on Friday. <laughs> Home, now home isn't the right word, it's nothing like the right word. This vehicle was at home in the environment for which she was designed. That'd be outer space. Earth orbit was her home, or at the very least, the Kennedy Space Center was her home. Los Angeles is not her home. LA is her final resting place. Museum, mausoleum, more or less the same thing in this case, and not just for the vehicle. Retiring a vehicle before its operational lifespan is over is sad, but flying our future into a history museum is heartbreaking. You know what was the most heartbreaking? Watching people all across Los Angeles point and gasp and cheer and applaud. And why shouldn't they? It's spectacular. It's a spectacular thing to see. It's an airplane the size of a 737 that blows through the speed of sound going straight up on its way to a top speed approaching 17,500 miles an hour. Sorry. See? There I go again. It doesn't blow through the sound barrier. It blew through the sound barrier. Its top speed isn't nearly 17,500 miles an hour. Its top speed used to be 17,500 miles an hour. Its actual top speed now is zero. You know, I knew this day was coming. But now that it's here, I'm just appalled. I watched those people smile and cheer and gasp and applaud, and I dreamed of living in the country I once grew up in, a country that would fly that living vision around the country and show it off all across this land, but not on the way out, on the way in. I remember growing up in a place where we would have done that and said, hey, come look at this newest and latest wonder of this amazing civilization we all share. She's going to break the speed of sound going straight up, and we're going to fly her only as long as it takes until we can build something better. Russia has capsules. China has capsules. We, and only we, had an airliner that flew in space. There are many criticisms to make of the design and a thousand times as many to make of her mission, but the fact is only America could build her and only America could fly her. And the proof is the Soviets took everything they had in the entire box and one time, just one time, they flew her mirror image unmanned just so they could say to the world and to themselves that they had been America for one day. Now, my lifelong hero, Neil Armstrong, recently died of complications following heart surgery, which really means he died of old age. I don't know of a man on earth who more deserved to die of old age than Neil Armstrong. But they're all dying of old age now, those Apollo astronauts, those moonwalkers. No one born after 1935 has ever walked on the moon. Think about that. Not before 1935, after. Walking on the moon is something our grandparents did. We can take our grandchildren to cemeteries and to museums to see the relics of what we once were. Here's another airplane in a different museum. It's the Boeing 2707, not the 767 or the 777 or even the new 787. The Boeing 2707 was as far beyond those airplanes as its number is beyond theirs. The year 2000, the 21st century, you remember the future was twice the size of the puny Concorde. It carried far more passengers and faster, too, a lot faster. I remember my dad telling me when it was canceled, this must have been around 1970 or so, that once you stop going forwards, you start going backwards. And I was 10 or 11, but this made me worry because it made my dad worry. But that was it, though, wasn't it? We just walked on the moon. We lost our way home the day after. So now what? Well, now. A handful of individual men and women, led by heroes like Elon Musk and Burt Rutan and Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson and Jeff Grayson and a few others, are trying to keep that flame alive. Individual people can do that, you know, despite what you may hear from the President of the United States of America. Hey, here's a little gag I saw on the internet not long ago. 
That's Werner von Braun, and behind him is the first stage of his Saturn V. The Saturn V never failed us, not once. It got us to the moon nine times. Now this is the Soviet N1 moon rocket designed by Sergei Korolev. They launched it twice, blew up twice. Both men had roads and infrastructure and all the government anyone could ever want, Mr. Obama. Von Braun and we Americans succeeded and Korolev and the Soviets failed because we had better people than they did. Better individual people. And if individual people can do that, then I'm telling you this. When this election is over, no matter what the outcome, this individual person is going for the first time in his life to apply his full powers to make sure that America's future is not locked in a museum and her heroes lie buried in her fields. Mark my words.